الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تبارك وتعالى إلى كافة الناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد Honorable brothers, elders, mothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We begin as always by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who alone is worthy of all praise and by sending the choices, salutations, blessings and salawat on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta wa sallamta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid My brothers and sisters, today is the 29th of Safar The month that is about to begin is none other than the month of Rabi'ul Awwal. And the month of Rabi'ul Awwal is the birth month of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. While we don't specifically celebrate the birthday of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is nonetheless a blessed time of year when we remember that this was the month wherein the Prophet ﷺ came into this world. And usually during the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, as you may recall from last year, I try to dedicate the Jumu'ah on an aspect or another from the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So my brothers and sisters, today, I want you to picture and imagine, close your eyes if you have to, that the Kaaba in Makkah Al-Mukarramah, everyone knows what the Kaaba is and the significance of that holy house for us Muslims. I want you to picture that there is somebody standing atop the Kaaba. And this somebody is a man of color. And remember, this is 1400 years ago. This somebody is a man of color, a black man. And to put it into perspective, the people of color at that time they were bought and sold like merchandise. They were slaves in the, in the Arab society. So he is atop the Kaaba and he is calling out the Adhan. The people below him, many of whom are not yet Muslim, they are polytheists, they are mushrikeen. Some of them, their names are even mentioned in the books of history. The likes of Harith bin Hijab. They are looking at the spectacle and they are saying that, you know, Allah had mercy on my father that he died before he had to witness this. And others are saying that why couldn't I have died before I had to witness this? A black man standing atop the Kaaba, the holiest place. How did this 
day come? And what were the events that led up to this day? This, my brothers and sisters, is the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We go back about 20 years. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is a young man in his late 30s. And the situation of the Arab people at that time, they were neighbors of two of the greatest powers that were known to the civilized world at that time. The Persians to one side and the Romans to the other. And these people, the Romans and the Persians, they were in a way much more civilized in their way of life than their Arab neighbors. We know that they had some form of law that they used to abide by and they used to run their society with. The Arabs, they pretty much had no such thing. Their society was run by a patchwork of tribal customs and their, their primary source of income was looting their neighbors and passing caravans. We know this from the books of history. Some of the more civilized Arabs, the Quraysh for example, they had moved into cities, they, have led, they, they left their Bedouin roots and they took up trade. And their trade partners were the Romans and the Persians. They traded and they brought merchandise back with them. But seldom were the Arabs influenced by the culture and the more civilized ways of their neighbors. They traded with them, but they had no interest in living a higher standard of life as their neighbors were, were already living. <coughs> And this was the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born at this time. A time where tribes, the Arab tribes, they would fight with one another sometimes for decades. Over simple issues. This was the state of the Arab nation at that time, the Arabian Peninsula. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into the world. And as you and I know, he was an orphan. As soon as he came into this world, his father had already passed away. And the Prophet ﷺ, he grew up, he's seeing this, the situation of his people, the ways of his people. And this was something that worried the Prophet ﷺ. And we all know the familiar story we were taught as children, that the Prophet ﷺ would go for days to meditate and to ponder over the situation of his people and where that society was going in the cave of Hira on the outskirts of Mecca al Mukarramah. And it was there that the first revelation came. And this is the start of the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. And my brothers and sisters, for the next 20 years leading up to the incident that I was just mentioning, a people were transformed. A people were transformed, as the Prophet ﷺ himself put it. بَدَأَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا That Islam came as something very strange. The way of life that was being taught by this, this Prophet ﷺ was something that was strange. It was unheard of in that part of the world. And the Prophet ﷺ, on another note, he went on to say, وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَأَ and again, there will come a day when that way of life will become strange for people. Fatuba lil ghuraba. Glad tidings be to these strange individuals, you and I. My brothers and sisters, there are many things that we can discuss, many events that took place in that 20 year period from the first revelation until the incident that we began with. And many things were significant, and we can't cover all of them right now. But some things that were of the utmost importance, my brothers and sisters. The first people that believed in the message of the Prophet ﷺ, as is the case with any movement, 
the first people that are attracted to this movement are usually the insignificant people who you know otherwise have nothing to lose the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the only people that believed in him at that time were his immediate family members and some of the outcasts of arab society there was an exception here and there the slaves of the arab society individuals who were otherwise not noticed when they walked into a room these were the people that were attracted to the message of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and today it is only and only because they accepted the message of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you and i we know their names how else would we remember the likes of ammar bin yasir radiyallahu ta'ala an a poor peasant in the society of makkah al mukarrama my brothers and sisters slowly the movement this new religion islam it spread and as it spread persecution began and this is the case with all prophets of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we look back to the year 617 common era this was before the hijra of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was the year that the family of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was boycotted by all the branches of the quraish and the year 619 common era while the boycott was still going on this was the year that today we know in the books of history as amul huzn the year of grief the wife of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the first believer she passed away the grandfather of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he passed away these were two supporters of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and sorry it was the uncle of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam my mistake not the grandfather and uh, my brothers and sisters the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was forced from the beloved city in which he was born and that brings us to the next chapter in the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a very important chapter the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the new city of madinah munawwara my brothers and sisters most of us seated here are either immigrants ourselves or we are first generation canadians and we might have a handful of second generation canadians sitting amongst us so we are this is a new place for us relatively speaking i know many of us were born here but this is a new place for us so it is very important that we remember how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions they put their roots down in a new city and how they dealt with this new atmosphere and this new way of life because the way of life of the people of madina was very different from the way of life of the people of quraish makkah al mukarrama my brothers and sisters the first thing the first thing that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did when he entered the city of madina munawwara was he established bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood in the community that there are the ansar the inhabitants original inhabitants of madina munawwara they are going to take care of these newcomers my brothers and sisters remember many of you might have seen the news just last night that the first the first flight of syrian refugees our brothers and sisters has arrived just last night alhamdulillah so treat these individuals you know and many of them in the coming weeks and months will be arriving right here they'll be sitting right beside you on friday treat these people as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions were treated when they entered a new city this is a new place for them establish the ties the bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood with these new individuals give them all the support that they need 
My brothers and sisters, something else that was done in the, Medi- in the society, in the new city of Medina Munawwara, was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he established the first written piece of legislation that the Arabs knew. Mithaqul Madina, or Dusturul Madina, the pact of Medina, the resolution of Medina, whatever you want to call it. My brothers and sisters, this piece of legislation established by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is something that a lot of us might not even know about. But it's important that we do. And it's important that we share this information with our brothers and sisters, Muslims, and also our non-Muslim colleagues. Educate them as well. That our Prophet, when he moved, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to a new city, the first thing that he did, or one of the first things that he did, was establish this piece of legislation. And what does that say? Some of the things mentioned in the Mithaq, the first thing actually that is mentioned in that piece of legislation is that the security of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a God-given right to every human being. It equally applies to Muslims and non-Muslims, no matter where they live. It is not permissible for anybody to take the life of another human being. My brothers and sisters, Something else that was put into that mithaq that non-Muslim members of society, and remember this is now the newly founded Muslim state. The Prophet ﷺ was the head of state. That non-Muslim members of that society, they will share the same political rights and cultural rights as Muslims. Nobody is going to interfere with each other's cultures and customs. Everybody is free to do these things as they please. And my brothers and sisters, there are other things that are mentioned that we don't have time to discuss right now. This was one of the first things that was done by the Prophet ﷺ. And the seerah goes on. I encourage everybody to study the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. There are many lessons that you and I can learn. But going back to what we began studying and what we began with today, my brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, after a series of events, he returned to the city of Makkah al Mukarramah in the eighth year of the Hijrah, and he returned victorious. The city that had once expelled the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions was now under the control of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It is mentioned by the various narrators that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he entered the city from the Awali, the higher lying areas of the city of Makkah al-Mukarramah, that he didn't enter as the victorious enter their conquered lands. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it is mentioned very clearly that he entered in a state of humility. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he entered in a state of humility. His head was bowed down so low that it is mentioned that his beard was spread across his chest. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was on that day that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked that man of color who was none other than Bilal bin Rabah radiallahu ta'ala anhu the Abyssinian slave that was purchased by Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who later became the Mu'addin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Later on during his life, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen, would refer to this man as Bilalun Sayyiduna. Bilal is one of our leaders. This man was asked to climb atop the Kaaba. and called the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the man that Harith bin Hisham and his peers were making comments about, that we should have died before we witnessed this day, that a man that who we used to sell and purchase, this man is standing atop the Kaaba. They said things like, Allah had mercy on my father that he, ha- he didn't have to witness this. 
this man is standing and the message on that day a day of victory the message could have been anything but you know what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said after bilal was finished it is very very clearly mentioned in the books of hadith that on that day the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in front of the people both muslim and non muslim was very simple the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said annasu rajulan there are only two types of people birrun taqiyun karimun ala allah there are good people pious people and he's using the word annas this refers to muslim and non muslim there are only two types of people there are good people whose actions are honorable in the sight of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then there are bad people whose actions are not honorable in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the message annasu min adam all of you all people are sons and daughters of sayyidina adam alayhi salam wa adamu min turab and adam was created from clay therefore all humanity is equal it is based on their actions that they are judged by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my brothers and sisters the events that led up to that day and the message the statement that was put by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on that day is something that you and i need to remember today when we deal with one another and when we deal with others people who are not muslim who don't share our faith that there is only one thing that should distinguish us the rest is left to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decide there are good people and there are bad people and these this good and bad is judged according to the actions that somebody performs may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam help us understand his seerah and inshallah we will talk about other elements of his seerah in the weeks to come inshallah